What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Steve Scully Unfiltered podcast. <sighs> A lot on my mind. <laughs> like, uh, whether or not I should even be doing this. A lot of second thoughts. But then, like, things are happening. <laughs> Like, I'm just looking at this article. So I pulled up a bunch of Zero Hedge articles. So I I mainly read ZeroHedge.com for news and generally agree with their interpretations about a lot of things. I don't take it at face value, that's for sure. And a lot of times it's, like, alternative viewpoints like for instance some of the articles are just like they're speaking as if the audience is generally under agreement like there, there's this understood that the covid is bullshit <laughs> some of the articles and others take it as like uh has a legitimate thing going on in their analysis and so even their own articles are not uh in agreement but it's a good source of things going on that a lot of the mainstream media doesn't talk about and especially doesn't give like the the angle that the zero hedge gives so it's uh it is my current news source of choice and when I look at others it's more so just to see what they're saying rather than like as a source of what's most pertinent of what's going on right now so this article says the chief medical officer says Canadians who refuse vaccine won't have quote freedom to move around Ontario's chief medical officer says that those who refuse to take the COVID vaccine won't have, quote, freedom to move around, end quote, and will have to continue to wear masks. Uh, let's see. Dr. David Williams acknowledged that, quote, we can't force someone to take a vaccine, but went on to explain how people who didn't take it would have their freedom of mobility severely restricted. What we can, quote, what we can do is to say sometimes for access or ease of getting into certain settings, if you don't have vaccination, then you're not allowed into that setting without other protection materials. So this is a slow and steady creep where first it was, well, face masks are not even necessarily doing anything. And then it's like, okay, face masks are required. And then it's like, well, vaccines are questionable. And then it's like, well, vaccines are required. And if you don't have them, well, the thing that was questionable questionable to begin with is required. And it's just this creep towards just all required. And if you don't do it, you're you're free to not, but you literally can't do anything. And then it becomes just so overwhelming that basically anyone who isn't in agreement and it doesn't go along with it with these things uh can't do anything and they just die and probably get focused down <laughs> by the the majority So this is just one example of many of the articles I've 
I'm noticing. So Canada is basically, it's not as free as the United States. They're, they're more draconian, just to put it frankly, <laughs> as you can see. And the UK is doing similar things. So let's see what else we got. Governor urges kids to rat out their parents' COVID rule violations. So the governor said, Unfortunately, we know some will still get together and schools have asked for help. Talking about Thanksgiving. V at VT Education will direct schools to ask students or parents if they were part of multi-family gatherings and if the answer is yes, they'll need to go remote for 14 days or 7 days and a test. <laughs> Guys, this is the land of the free. And they're mandating things. Infringing on our rights. Alright? That's what's happening. This is unconstitutional. This is not acceptable. No. <laughs> Need to? Need to. And they're at... So the, th the funny thing is that they're asking the students. So students... Uh, what did your family do? You know, are they in agreement with what we're doing here? Are they going against the rules? And if they're going against the rules, well, we're going to have to punish you guys. That's just how it goes here. <laughs> All right, anyway. San Francisco orders new COVID lockdown. CDC asks Americans to wear masks indoors unless at home you have no say in the matter cdc don't ask for shit maybe suggest this is what we're thinking but we don't uh we're not in any way asking you to do anything <sighs> Mayor Garcetti bans walking as the latest LA lockdown begins. <laughs> as California takes a page out of Australia's COVID-19 playbook. The L.A. mayor earlier this week warned it's time to cancel everything, including unnecessary travel on foot, also known as walking. <laughs> uh, all travel, including without limitation, travel on foot, bicycle, scooter, motorcycle, automobile, or public transit is prohibited, subject to the exceptions in paragraph V. Or five. <clears throat> they are infringing on our rights. You have the right to pursue happiness. We can't move. How are we going to be happy? <laughs> oh my god, it's hilarious. <laughs> Literally, it's just like a stopping of the system. <sighs> Like an engine seizing. It's not good. It doesn't have uh, prosperity as the next step. <laughs> Can employers fire any employees that choose not to take the COVID vaccine? 
So let's see. Let's see what people are saying. From a CNBC article. In general, yes, employers are able to mandate the vaccine when it becomes available with, of course, a bunch of caveats. If religious convictions or listing possible exemptions, exemptions for those with specific medical conditions and those with sincerely held religious convictions. So we'll kind of pretend like we're, you know, respecting your beliefs and adhering to the constitutional rights that you are given. But we'll call it a caveat. Uh, goes on to explain why federal law is probably not going to protect any person of faith from mandatory vaccination requirements. Ryan emphasizes that state laws regulating what constitutes reasonable accommodations for religious groups vary significantly. Uh, It says... What was it? Freedom of religion? I don't think that it varies significantly. But that under federal law, employers don't have to grant a religious accommodation if doing so would result in more than a de minimis cost to the operation of the business. And the de minimis meaning of minimum importance and is used in law to refer refer to a total so small that is not even recognized. If doing so would result in more than an insignificant cost to the operation of the business. It's the law of the land, bitches. Obey it. You want it to be the law of the land? Well, guess what? Freedom of religion is the law of the land. It's the constitution. Foundational law of the land. This isn't a debate. Oh, let's come up with some reason where we can go against the Constitution and because now we have this reason that we just made up when we when we ignored the Constitution. We just made this other law up and like, oh, because we can. And didn't you see how we had this law? It doesn't matter that it's unconstitutional because we have the law and now we're mandating things. No, you're fucking not. This is not okay that the government is basically complicit in and wanting. It's not like they're just like, oh, fine, just go ahead if you, you know, it's going to cost you something to care, so just don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, under federal law, there is hardly any protection at all for workers that wish to refuse the COVID vaccine. (laughs) So if anyone wants to help me sue the government on the legal grounds that I have the right to practice my own religion and they're infringing on my religion and I've explicitly and in detail elaborated on and shown a history of continuous practice of what I believe (laughs) 
I have a grounds. And, you know, other people can think the same. They can have the same stance. You can have the same stance. <laughs> Just saying. So let's see what else is going on. Pfizer CEO, not certain vaccine will stop people from spreading COVID-19. All right, oh, whatever. Biden jokes he would fake illness and resign over disagreement. <laughs> Reading his quotes. It's a matter of the thing. We are simpatico on our philosophy of government. Simpatico on how we want to approach these issues that we're facing. And when we disagree, it'll be just like so far. It's been just like when Barack and I did. It's in private. She'll say, I think you should do A, B, C, or D. And I'll say, I like A. I don't like B and C. And so, so go, okay, I don't and like I told Barack, if there's a fundamental disagreement we have based on a moral principle, I'll develop some disease and say I have to resign. But all kidding aside, the first lady to be told me she holds them for you. Yes, she does. But not with she's because she's she and yeah, Kamala have become right. friends. Yeah. But all kidding aside, it's it's a matter of. The thing, we are simpatico on our philosophy of government and simpatico on how we want to attach, approach these issues that we're facing. And so I don't have, and when we disagree, it'll be just like, it's so far, it's been just like when Barack and I did. It's in private. She'll say, I think we should do A, B, C, or D. And I'll say, I, don't, I like A, I don't like B and C. Mm -hmm. And let's go, okay. But, and I, like I told Barack, if, if, if I... Before I continue, it's in private. Why is it in private? show your thoughts the stream of thoughts <laughs> reach something where there's a, a fundamental disagreement we have based on a moral principle I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll develop some disease and say I have to resign um, we, we don't have that I'm a, we haven't and we discussed at length mm -hmm. our views oh, on foreign like, policy oh on domestic God, policy he's so on intel senile. he's telling them <laughs> look at her face <laughs> after you told him about the election fraud and we discussed at length mm -hmm. our views on foreign policy on domestic policy on intelligence and the great thing is she has a background in the Senate on intelligence, on a moral principle. I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll develop some disease and say I have to resign. Um, we, we don't have that. I'm a, we haven't. And we discussed at length uh, our views on foreign policy, on domestic policy, on intelligence. Well, and I the great thing is she. React? How do I react to him just telling them the plan? Maybe? I don't know. He keeps doing that. <laughs> uh, and then... A Harris administration together with Joe Biden. A Harris administration together with Joe Biden. <laughs> Alright, Eric Trump tweeted that. So, I mean, immediately it's you know, in, in question, right? <laughs> I mean, shit, that's hilarious. <laughs> He's going to relaunch that effort and keep pushing further to make it. Oh. Harris Biden administration is going to relaunch. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's go. Fauci walks back claims UK rushed COVID vaccine approval, citing misunderstanding. Fauci said, quote, 
I love the Brits. They're great. They're good scientists. But they just took the data from the Pfizer company. And instead of scrutinizing it really, really carefully, they said, okay, let's approve it. That, that's it. And they went with it. And then when asked about it, he said, there really has been a misunderstanding. And for that, I'm sorry. And I apologize. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what the fuck they're gonna make this vaccine be like like the toilet paper just uh, flying off the shelves and then out of stock and make people just want it as as so they're not gonna have enough vaccines and then covid's gonna get really bad this winter, this dark winter, as they said at some point, maybe. I'm just just supposing, which, uh, you know, I've done that many times throughout the years, and always I'm wrong when I suppose like that. <laughs> but... <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know if the vaccine is coming out in the midst of a COVID pandemic that's like a second wave. Like as the vaccine's being released, there's a second wave that's sweeping the world. And you better get your vaccine if you don't want to get uh, hit with the second wave. Not exactly um, trustworthy. That's all I'm saying. Especially when the vaccine was just rushed out. Pretty sure there were patents on the, on the vaccine also like years ago. I was reading something about some patent from like 2017. <laughs> I think it was for testing, for a, a, a means to test for COVID-19 or something. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. UK government medical officer says masks should be worn for years. For years to come. Number one, I don't think we're going to eradicate coronavirus ever. I think it's going to be with humankind forever. Um, secondly, I think we may get to a point where coronavirus becomes a seasonal problem. I don't want to draw too many parallels with flu, but possibly that is the kind of way we would learn to live with it. And the third point is, do I think there will come a big moment where we kind of, you know, have a massive party and throw on masks and hand sanitizer and say, that's it, it's behind us, like the end of the war. No, I don't. I think those kind of habits that we've learned from that clearly stop the spread of other respiratory viruses, such as flu, will perhaps persist for many years. And that, that may be a good thing if they do. Number one. So it's a war on a coronavirus. So we're just fighting. Like he's just saying, we're not going to just be like, the war is over. Or we could. War is over. No fucking war is bullshit. <laughs> End of war. I'm done fighting it. Nah, that goes for me. I get it. Facebook bans anti-vaccine conspiracy theories as U.S. rollout begins. Enough said. Let's see what they say. Said it will be monitoring for misinformation that is been debunked by public health experts. Oh, let's trust the experts. They're authorities. No, they're fucking not. (laughs) 
This could inf include false claims about the safety, efficacy, ingredients, or side effects of the vaccines. For example, we will remove false claims that COVID-19 vaccines contain microchips or anything else that isn't on the official vaccine ingredient list. <laughs> Do we agree or not agree with the Constitution? I think it should be that way everywhere. I don't give a shit what the boundary is. There should be freedom to speak everywhere. And if you don't agree, you should probably rethink what you're thinking. <laughs> oh my God, it's ridiculous. Why would we want the internet to be like a uh, a monarchy or a dictatorship, I guess, more accurately? <laughs> Why? We would, in my thoughts, want it to be where the principles that we founded what is supposedly the most uh, principled nation in history upon. Maybe they should be relevant and, like, we should push for those things and push therefore against this kind of bullshit this is fucking bullshit who cares if they're wrong let them say what they're gonna say the truth will come out in the end unless you're hiding the truth which will also come out in the end <laughs> Oh, shit. I don't know what the hell is happening. What the hell? I think it's all like Truman Show anyway. Which is kind of heartless given that other people are probably like, Hey, what the fuck, dude? Like, this is some real shit going on to me. And I'm just like, why is this happening? <laughs> this is so weird. Like, the odds are too... It just... It's... The streetlight effect. When people look within the system for the solutions... A policeman sees a drunk man crawling around on his hands and knees at night and asks what the problem is. The drunk man says he's trying to find his keys, so the officer gets down and starts searching with him. For a few minutes, they crawl around, un hunting for the missing key ring by the light of the street lamp before the policeman stands up frustrated. Are you sure this is where you lost them, he asks. This isn't where I lost them, replies the drunk man. Then why are we searching here? It's where the light is. This old joke is the source of the name for the streetlight effect, one of the many, many glitches in human cognition which causes us to tend towards a misperception of our world and the way it's happening. So when we look within the system for the solution to the system, <laughs> as it puts it, to the the solution to the system which is what it really is <laughs> we ain't gonna find it there because it's not it's too small of a like 
analysis it's too lacking of a bigger picture this is interesting philadelphia priest dies after participating in moderna covid vaccine trial so people are dying because this fucking bullshit is being propagated and then they're like putting their life at risk to like help humanity when really they're just helping to further some bullshit propaganda agenda and they're rushing vaccines in because they want to make money of course <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're the pharmaceutical company. We already have the background, so we'll just, like, tweak some shit. And then the dude in, like, the lab is like, I got something, but it's not, like, that great. And the dude in the in the corporate's like, good enough. Let's t test it. Test it. We got to get this vaccine out. And then the world's like, Pandemic. You feel uh, like uh, the fear necessitates that we must r rush this, right? Oh my god, so, so applicable to me. <laughs> uh, Biden says Fauci to stay on will ask Americans to wear masks for first hundred days of administration. Where is this? On the first day I'm inaugurated to say I'm... Oh, let me read this. Biden described his coronavirus plans as a balance between ensuring that Americans believe the vaccine is safe. Okay? This is so telling. It doesn't say that Biden described his coronavirus plans as a balance between ensuring that the vaccine is safe. It says between ensuring that Americans believe the vaccine is safe and instituting a number of plans that will curb the spread of the virus without shutting down the economy. So what do we need to do? Maybe mandate some things. I know it's unconstitutional, but, uh, you know, given the times, we just gotta do <laughs> Just a hundred days to mask. Not forever. A hundred. Mind you, this is months in advance. What the fuck does he know of the future? How does he know that January 1st, there's not going to be this global announcement that there hasn't been a COVID case in the last month? Because that could happen. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm just saying it's possible. So why is he saying 100 days to mask, not forever? As if... It's just assumed. So, oh, so you're assuming the worst, which is also what you're propagating. Not forever. Oh, so we got, it's a creeping game. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> At some point, they push, 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 push. It's like this tiny, tiny, tiny motion downward. And then just this spike upward. That's what's going to happen. 
when we take our freedoms back. This isn't a debate. No. Don't ask me to wear a mask. It's not constitutional, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's funny, though. It's, uh, sorry. <laughs> Newsom places California under three-week stay-at-home order. CDC chief says COVID worth health crisis in a century. Thanks, CDC, for chiming in. <laughs> for sure you're not biased there, CDC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Three weeks stay at home order. Um, let's see. This is Thursday, the 3rd of December, 2020. Oh, this is an hour and 23 minutes press conference. Press briefing. I don't know if that's different. Four or five regions of the Golden State could hit their lockdown threshold in a day or two, as it looks increasingly likely that Californians will be facing the most restrictive lockdown since the spring by Friday night. All right, this is a lot. A slap in the face. L.A. bar owner livid after City Let's Hollywood studio set up dining tents. <laughs> so, right, so this video... So this is my place, the Pineapple Hill Grill and Saloon. If you go to my page, you can see all the work I did for outdoor dining for tables being seven feet apart. And I come in today because I'm organizing a protest and I came in to get stuff for that. And I walk into my parking lot and obviously Mayor Garcetti has approved this. Has approved this being set up for, this being set up for for a movie company. I'm losing everything. Everything I own is being taken away from me. And they set up a movie company right next to my outdoor patio, which is right over here. And people wonder why I'm protesting and why I have had enough. <laughs> they have not given us money and they have shut us down. We cannot survive. My staff cannot survive. Look at this. Tell me that this is dangerous, but right next to me as a slap in my face, That's safe. This is safe. 50 feet. Literally causing businesses to be closed down for a propaganda scheme bullshit lie. And then siphoning all this money from the people and then it goes to bigger and bigger entities that are less and less individuals and controlled by fewer and fewer people <laughs> like we can 
just say no like stop the sm slow creep and go back the other way like if every business just simply did not comply what are they gonna do the people have spoken bitches That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't have business, so what do I know? But that's why it takes all of us, like a collective, doing it. Because, you know, if, it, if it's just like a person here and there, they're just going to get fucking squashed. <sighs> By this bullshit. Back to the killing of Iran's nuclear scientists. So, like, last week, last Friday, senior nuclear scientist was assassinated, and they thought it was by an unidentified gunman, and we've come to find out it was by a remote-controlled weapon mounted in a vehicle that subsequently exploded. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Fucking, uh, whoa. Like, what the fuck? And then if you read on here, this isn't the first time. The killing of Iran's nuclear scientist, January 12, 2010. Another scientist killed by a remote controlled bomb strapped to a motorcycle. Died after a motorcyclist, another one, died after a motorcyclist attached a bomb to his car in northern Tehran. Killed by a gunman. Died after assailants on a motorcycle attached a magnetic bombs or magnetic bombs to his car. Killed by a remote controlled machine gun attack on his car all in transit to work so it's the same signature Israel hasn't denied it <laughs> they're just like what are you gonna do don't make bombs Submit. You don't have a choice. That's what they're saying to Iran. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying to the government. To all governments. Stop telling the people what to do. <laughs> See, I'm a person. I'm not a government. I can give a suggestion. It's not like I'm mandating anything. And even if I was like, I mandate this. <laughs> no one has to listen to me. But government that has freaking just trained professional killers <laughs> in mass, thousands and thousands people they've just trained professionally to be killers. I mean, how fucked up is that to do that to your people? So, uh, what else? Uh, <laughs> so I emailed. <laughs> I'm going to read this email to give you a kind of idea 
to how I write my emails. So I was listening to a Into the Impossible with Brian Keating uh, podcast, and he was talking to Durant Lewis and Luke Barnes. And so I emailed them, <laughs> even though we, I've con- reached out to Brian Keating and feel a little bad to continue to do so. Pardon me, especially Brian, and I call. <laughs> I found it. I thought I'd be kind of funny because I know they get freaking bombarded by saying another of those theory of everything emails. Sad face, <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen. Pardon me, especially Brian, who I've perhaps heckled enough at this point. In Brian's Into the Impossible episode, Cosmic Revolutionary's Handbook, How to Beat Big Bang Cosmology, Luke says at timestamp, Yes, there are problems. The reason we're here is because we don't have a better solution, but you know if you've got one, for heaven's sake, tell us. So here I am following through with that, I say. (laughs) With a smiley face. The crux of why I propose a model that I present to be a more precise description of the nature of reality is because it describes how both magnetic fields and cosmological redshift are caused with a single mechanism. I do my best to carefully walk through the line of reasoning in this two-part video description where the actual details of what I am proposing are in the second video, but the whole line of reasoning is important, and I would appreciate your consideration. So regarding this email, like, I get it. It takes a lot of time to really look at people's ideas, so I try to be to the point and just say, this is why I feel this model determined deserves some attention from others than me because i mean i'm giving it attention (laughs) but like other than me like some global attention (laughs) Uh, so uh, this is why i say the crux this is this is like the cornerstone of my argument of why this model is worth considering and then i link these videos this is truly just the tip of the iceberg of my research which i feel kind of awkward saying you know like i don't want to talk up my work but i mean it's just sometimes where it's at is where it's at you know i'm saying (laughs) Uh, I have written a book and made many forms of content to share the analysis, but this particularly, especially the explanation for how magnetic fields are caused, drastically reduces the fundamentals compared to current models, and so I propose should be taken seriously as an actual possible explanation for what is happening while current models simply just accept a causeless nature of magnetism, which, you know, I I feel a little like when I say that to a physicist, they may quickly think, well, actually, charges move and this does that, and therefore magnetic fields arise from charges in this way. But where the charges come from, like, it's a causeless nature. Whereas what I'm saying is an actual mechanism for how it physically arises from other known mechanisms, i.e. gravity. 
And then perhaps even more importantly, I have an actual experiment that I feel could be done to test the model. As a framework, there are ever smaller particles that are more abundant the smaller they are. And so this sea of particles effectively forms things we see such as fields. Thus, a wave of light would be a wave of particles, just like a wave in the ocean. And so if this is the case, then I must provide an explanation for the double slit experiment results. What I propose is that when particles pass through a slit, because the slit is made so narrow, the particle passes through the slit and is able to be deflected by the slit material's gravity dependent on the exact position through the slit that the particle passes. I propose that the cumulative effect of all particles passing through a given slit in this way produce a wave, produces a wave. Thus, an experiment that could be done to determine if this is the case would be to literally just change the slit material and maintain all other variable variables constant, slit dimensions, light source, etc., and determine if there is a relationship between the intensity of the wave produced by the slit out to larger distances and the mass of the slit material because it's going to produce a wave and so if it's more massive it should spread out how much of a wave is produced if it's caused by gravitational lensing bending the path of the flow of the particles travel um and determine if there's really this would show whether the slit was causing the wave this to the best of my knowledge has not been considered this would explain all forms of double slit experiments including the single photon experiment of particular interest to this possibility I would like to draw your attention to this article I wrote where I discuss a specific double slit experiment done. Then I link this article. In this experiment, the wave produces the wave produced is larger when the molecules pass through the slit more slowly and I propose are exposed to the gravitational influence of the slip material for a more substantial duration so as to be deflected more so than the faster particles. So in this experiment, uh, what they found is that a by passing molecules through a slit, because they travel, uh, they first of all, they basically they had to travel slowly or else they wouldn't produce an interference pattern. If they travel too fast, they would just produce a particulate pattern. So they had to travel slowly because of their high mass. <clears throat> and they traveled so slowly that differences in their velocity caused them to basically sink by gravity as they traveled from the emission point to the screen where they hit and so they they basically took a curved trajectory rather than just a straight line like a ray of light would take and so because of their slow velocity they they curve down and so the slower they're moving the further they fall and so what's interesting is the ones that are, are moving slower are basically it's, it separates them, so the faster ones are at the top, and the slower ones are at the bottom of the detection screen. And so what we see is that the faster ones at the top are not as spread out, whereas the ones that are slower, that are at the bottom, spread out more. And so it's as if they're able to be more deflected by the 
gravitational influence of the slit material because they pass slower. And so because they're near the, the particle, which it's a slit, so it's nothing. I mean, anything is, is going to have a similar effect. And so if there's light traveling, it has to be so close to the material for us to detect a actual change in the trajectory of the light. And so that's why it's so, so narrow. If it were to be wide, we just wouldn't detect this interference pattern. But uh, in this proposed proposed gravity, notably, all three of these experiment these explanations above for redshift magnetic fields in the double slit experiment are the same gravity, which I think Isaac Newton might agree that relating seemingly unrelated observations by the very same cause as the moon's orbit and a falling apple might be a likely path to furthering our understanding. <laughs> <coughs> and I said, I hope you don't mind. I am attaching my book if you feel so inclined as to look at it. So then I attach my book. as a PDF. And then I say, I will get back to you regarding the 10 steps to beating the Big Bang. I think you will find that step three has an answer within the explanation. So he's asking step three in his 10 steps was explaining why uh, the universe is dark, why we see darkness and not just the sea of light everywhere, which if there's stars everywhere should have the light reaching us. But it that analysis assumes that the light travels in a straight line but if there's gravity involved like intermediary objects or even more massive objects that just essentially pull the light from from the source that's really distant back away from us so it doesn't reach us and so then it ultimately it produces a sky that is largely dark not because the universe is 13.8 billion years and so there's only so much light in the universe, but because it's, it's infinite and it pulls the light back in on itself and so it creates these like regions that, are, that we see darkness due to the gravitational lensing that that's ultimately why if there are, yes there's all these systems out there infinite systems but the gravitational lensing effects of systems near them pull the light back and so we see this dark sky with only what we can see which doesn't have that effect so completely that it's just like gone from our vision at least within the spectrums that we see i mean and i'm sure there's there's ways to see further but so nicely i got a response and i appreciate it from dr lewis Rant. I don't know how to say it. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for your email. I've watched your YouTubes and looked over your book. It was nice to see the Einstein cross as I observed and modeled the micro lensing. I sh uh, maybe I shouldn't read this. Sorry, man. <laughs> Since it's someone else's uh, confidential email to me, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fine. It's not. <laughs> At this point, it's already on the screen, but although maybe I don't even publish the screen, so I guess I don't have to. <laughs> 
It's fine. It's not. It's very polite and po and uh, <laughs> all all is well, you know. But I just damn. This always bothers me. The line. <laughs> ah. so let me just summarize and I won't show it on the screen how about that <laughs> so I'm not specifically reading it so he says uh, he worked with the Einstein cross before which is cool and uh, and I'm gonna have to battle you're going to have a battle with your cosmic revolution. It's true. And then he goes on and says that uh, what is needed is translating my general model, which is kind of lacking in mathematics, into mathematics to make robust robust predictions and this is a really this is like an interesting part of the model because i mean it's classical mechanics and so it does have robust predictions in essence it's just new ones it has those too but in mathematics, that's the thing. It's all right. The mathematics are all there. Like already we use classical mechanics all the time. But will what I present make us use it more effectively and more accurately? Maybe. But where I am the one that figures out how to model it that way? I don't know, man. <laughs> 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 don't look at me for that <laughs> guys i don't know i need my i need my maxwell to my faraday is what i was thinking because <laughs> uh, i don't know i basically modeled classical mechanics in my original research paper called the universal principle of universal principle of natural philosophy this is my original paper i wrote in 2014 august it's definitely a rough draft universal principle of natural philosophy so Isaac Newton's work is the mathematical principles of natural philosophy. So I am making a point that it's just a universal principle. It's just how it is. <laughs> but it's still classical. But it's more... It's not just mathematical. It's universally how it is. At least that was the kind of general principle of this. Even though it's also in its like roughest form. And I don't, I don't really use this term universal principle of natural philosophy anymore but it still is representative of what it essentially is <clears throat> and so in this paper which i wrote on my own never got peer-reviewed i basically say well it's newton newton's laws just infinite particles good luck <laughs> 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 like I don't know how to model this and I don't even know if this math like makes legitimate sense and and probably it's not the, like the best way to write it I don't know guys I don't know everything I know everything but I don't know everything <laughs> uh, but I mean this is a legitimate concern that I face a lot is that where's the math and even though they may or may not have seen this i don't know if they've looked at this <coughs> it's 
Sorry, I'm sick. Not COVID, because I got COVID tested. It was fucking weird, and I was not whole time like only only just so that I could go back to work and tell coworkers that I got COVID tested, so they didn't feel concerned because they know me enough to know that I'm like fuck that shit, it's bullshit, you know? They're like, oh god, he's sick and he's back now. What if he had COVID? Because you know damn well that boy didn't get tested. I came back. I was like, yeah, I was sick. I got tested. It wasn't COVID. Every freaking person I told. <laughs> Just don't worry. I know you were probably worried given my, my way of, you know, constantly expressing my uh, concerns regarding certain issues. <laughs> subtly and maybe not so subtly and not constantly but you know whenever some bullshit's going on oh new new fucking mandate huh nope (laughs) 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 (laughs)
one over a second, and then it's this graph. Like, it doesn't even make fucking sense. <sighs> Redshift. But it's not, it's a correlation, getting back to my point. And the the correlation is called Hubble's Law, but the actual observations are not on the line. They're, they're off. And what's interesting is they're like vibratorily off maybe i'm i'm just guessing cuz they're, they're like statistically anomalously off from the correlation enough where it's like that's odd i don't know of a reference where i can be like this reference talks about it but i've read that the the deviation that this has from the line but the thing is, if it's a, a figure eight field, if all of these galaxies are actually, the light isn't traveling from this galaxy, say 20, 250 megaparsecs to Earth. It's not just traveling in a straight line, 250 megaparsecs to Earth. It's traveling in a figure eight orbital shape. And because of that, like, if it's traveling all these distances in a repetitive figure eight orbital shape, then the figure eight aspect of it makes it kind of variant in terms of how redshifted it is in a given loop. Like, it's not like the the redshift per distance of a figure eight is not linear in short in one figure eight. But in many figure eights, if it goes through repetitively through, it's additive. So it's redshift, 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 redshift per distance. So it becomes a linear-ish correlation. But it's very like, like uh, because of the motion away from the center, the first portion of a, of a curve of a figure eight, it's not going to have or it's going to have redshift effect happening, but then it comes back to the object where, so it's moving towards the object. And so gravity's pulling on, on it as it moves towards it, causing a blue shift. And so if, if we see it in the first portion of a loop, then we're going to see that red, all of that redshift of, the motion away but we're not going to see the blue shift portion of the loop that would have came after and so it's not as linear it's more of a like bumpy line that it follows the trend but it's bumpy in how it does it and i think that that's even like, like something i've read is going on with the deviation and that they don't have like a good explanation for why it's so bumpy in essence <laughs> but um just to kind of point out regarding hubble's law like there even though i don't have a model precisely showing it like the thing is it depends on what's doing it it depends on a lot of things and it it becomes hard to model unless you just like assume that something's doing it and then just figure out what the mass is that is required to actually cause light to bend this way across basically millions of light years and distance what kind of mass would be required but like it's not based on the data then it's just like back calculating what would be necessary and to produce hubble's law and then being like well probably there's something out there that has that mass some and maybe that's the great attractor of shapely super cluster and maybe uh Then he says uh, to make sure to get my history correct. 
It's just fair. I mean, it's definitely. I don't. I definitely didn't I, like. Part of what I say is I didn't mean to be here. You know, <laughs> it just happened. And you know, so I'm doing my best. And there's places where I might have like tweaked inadvertently what actually happened. Like he's saying uh, that Friedman and Einstein had the mathematics for the expanding universe before Hubble's observations. And so I, I basically argue that we saw redshift and then we saw uh, motions greater than the speed of light would be required if the redshift was caused by motion. And so then we just like added expansion of space is like a... There we go. And he's saying, well, it was already proposed prior to even seeing Hubble's observations. And so there's like a, it's as if Hubble's observation is uh, validating the proposal of the expanding universe. But the thing is, is like lambda the cosmological constant is it's really just a fudge factor i don't know the exact history of where they're coming up with the cosmolo cosmological constant but i mean einstein removed it and then called it his biggest blunder and the, you hear the story oh his biggest blunder is brilliant though because he had the he had the cosmological constant and accounted for it and therefore it wasn't a blunder at all or something you know they always like uh romanticize the story as well <laughs> but uh That doesn't mean that it was, like, expanding. I mean... <laughs> that there was a Big Bang. Maybe, maybe... I mean, I, I have certainly considered that it's possible that magnetic fields could be caused by gravitational lensing, where a figure eight arises, but maybe that's not precisely what's causing the gravity, the, the red shift that we see in all distant galaxies, specifically because uh, we see so much structure on a larger scale than maybe I realized at the time. So now it's mi a little less like certain to me that gravitational red shift specifically from a figure eight uh, is the case not to say it's not I think it's possible to test it's just and to see if if it is the case like for sure if it's the case we could see it and people could be like yeah that's actually what's happening and it's crazy but I don't know anymore as for certain and maybe there's something going on where like there's maybe some like supernova of some mega black hole where we're seeing it in action and all that we see is within the boundaries of that and so things are moving away faster and faster the further away from the event but like because I mean supernova happen on all scales And the excited electron is a supernova, radioactive decay, nuclear fusion. <clears throat> so they probably, uh, I mean, it's possible that there was something like more, like, yes, everything is moving away in a straight line and it's possible. And, uh, but like the odds of that given that we're uh, near the center of where everything's expanding from is a little questionable. 
and the fact that we're in the middle of like a super void, the largest known super void in in the observable universe, we're at the center of it. And if light's bending so that figure eights are happening and then it's reaching Earth, then if it's only traveling short distances, it has to go in a straight line. So it has to be a real image, a, a, a direct image of the object. But if it's going long distances, it can be lensed over and over and over and then arrive. Which would mean there'd be probably more apparent galaxies at a larger distances, which matches what the observations we see. Whereas us being near the center of this whole expanding like black hole supernova that like mega super ultra black hole supernova or something <laughs> or even like a star that radiates galaxies because it's so massive in our perception the system is so massive that it's radiation is literally galaxies and those galaxies like they when they become radiation they start slower and then they kind of like a ray of light and uh and then they go like the it's almost like breaking the bond between the two being pulled off but also being pushed off <laughs> maybe and we're near that system, we're looking around, and we're seeing all these things flying away from us, and it's all galaxy, galaxy radiation, or some shit. I mean, it's possible that it's something else, but... There's every time I think that kind of way, I'm like, but then there's this, which says, nah, I don't know. There's ways to test for gravitational lensing on the large scale. Like, if it's happening on on the scale of the scope that I am suggesting, it would mean like everything's optical illusions, and so we could see the same systems over and over, see the same collection of systems over and over enough to the point where we could actually be like with high confidence these are the same systems and there it's here and there it is again there and there it is again there this group of systems and uh different ages because the light traveled in different amounts of figure eight orbitals like only once only half of a figure eight orbital maybe we even see the milky way which is interesting to think about. And I've, I've found some galaxies where I'm like, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. <laughs> They're like, this looks a lot like the Milky Way would look like if we were looking at the Milky Way. And I'm like, that's probably the fucking Milky Way, guys. Email. Hey, guys, have you considered that uh, that's the Milky Way and gravitational lensing might be causing this to bend back and we're looking at the Milky Way? Hello? Hello? Is... Oh. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. But I mean, it makes a point that expansion uh, was predicted if you will before the observation again though it line it leads down this train of thought where now we have expansion of space when we didn't before and why why do we want that i could at least go back to something simpler not don't add more it's just not, it doesn't make sense and then Dark energy is necessary now. Now we're adding more than... Not just expansion. Now we're adding another thing. And then we're also like... Okay. Well, because the Big Bang is right. 
but it doesn't explain like what's going on with the small system. So we probably need another system, some kind of theory. So it almost like necessitates another theory to exist. Like it can't just stand alone. It requires some explanation for quantum what's going on on the small scale. So there's quantum mechanics. It's to save the day as another model to fill the void. <laughs> and then general relativity. All they just it was a a match made in heaven where they all coexisted. I mean, Einstein tried to basically say, uh, hey guys, like there's a more like universal model out there probably. <laughs> and definitely fought against quantum mechanics and like the absurdity of a lot of its claims <clears throat> and then he said you also need to understand the data more correctly the quarto at all observation are peculiar motions which is the cosmic expansion has been subtracted off, he says. But I, I think the image he's talking about is local, the local group. And those ones have such low redshift from cosmological expansion. Or cosmological redshift locally is very low because the distance is small. And so peculiar motions. Wait. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what it is. The only ones we even see red blue shift at all are because their peculiar motions are uh, actually able to show a blue shift. But when there's this great distance where redshift per distance becomes substantial enough, then we stop seeing any blue shift whatsoever. That was my point. I, I might have in my video implied that it was the blue shift. I don't, I'm not sure what I am implied but the general gist of it is still accurate that we only see blue shift locally and it's in this dichotomy where it's relatable to the position of this object interestingly <clears throat> um So then I responded. <laughs> uh, I wrote a long, long response. I'll just read it. Dr. Lewis. And I re he responded to all three of us, the other two, two uh, physicists as well. So I just replied all also. And it was in case they were curious what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, many thanks for your response and consideration of my work. I agree that there are many areas of the model that are arguably insufficient, in particular the mathematics. I don't know if you saw my equations I put in my original research paper, PDF here, but the general purpose of the equations is that it is purely Newton's laws, but that the universe is infinite in nature and and particles in some instances can pass through other particles. And so I am unsure if mathematics can even be applied to describe the universe in any way, but as a greater and greater approximation. So like I was saying, Newton's laws, I mean, we've used these for predictions like countless times. Countless. Probably significantly more times than we've used any other model like it's not even on the same order of magnitude 
the amount of times we've used Newton's laws versus the amount of times we've used, say, the wave equation is not even comparable. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> But the thing is, it's just a greater and greater approximation. So I'm not sure if I even makes it any more of a, a exact description in terms of modeling things. Because effectively, like you need to know all the systems to account for them. And Then I go on and say, very much like Laplace's demon and the limitations that we find emerging in areas such as chaos theory. Laplace's demon being if an intellect were to basically know the position of everything and its motions, then it could predict the past, present, and future, basically. Past and future. Past and the future would be both present before its eyes, is what it, Laplace said, I think. And chaos theory is that we cannot, pre the approximate present does not approximately determine the future. The present determines the future, but the approximate present does not approximately determine the future. So there's always these limitations that we have, regardless of how exact a mathematical model may be. And then I just say, with that said, surely there's a way to precisely model and simulate the emergence of a magnetic field from many particles being gravitationally locked in a figure eight orbital when the programming acknowledges and allows for particles to pass through the objects that they orbit. And unfortunately, I never intended to be in a position where I was proposing a theory to the scientific community in this manner. And so while I have a chemical engineering degree, I haven't used any math advanced mathematics in years and the task feels a bit overwhelming to even attempt. When I first began this process, I found myself trying to show how Maxwell's equations could emerge from gravity in this way, but it was a daunting task and I felt the inverse radius, radius squared function of magnetism was direct evidence that it, that it emerged from gravity or vice versa. But gravity is simpler in its nature because it doesn't have dual function of not only pull, but also push. Like any model, there is always more to explore and is always a work in progress. But when it comes to predictions, I've made a rather concrete one. So I was just like reiterate this. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I just reiterate the same shit. <laughs> Maybe I'll just say it again in different words and make, see if that makes it clear that I have an actual like way to test what I'm saying. <laughs> but when it comes to predictions, I've made a rather concrete one regarding the double slit experiment. Specifically, that light can ultimately be thought of as being a wave composed of particles and each particle, which can be analyzed basically individually, is the point of thinking of in terms of particles, passes through the slit at some different region of the slit where they are either centered or off-center, and that when they are off-center, then they are gravitationally lensed by the mass of the slit material, causing their path to deflect and ultimately produce a cumulative wave. If this were to be the case, blah, blah, blah. so I just go on and just reiterate the same thing. I don't know. For instance, steel, according to this hypothesis, should cause grit. I'll just read it. Sorry, sorry. Might as well. I'm just trying to show, like, this is how I write my emails. And I got a response this time, and I appreciate them checking it out. And I don't know what this, what the future may hold for this email chain. Maybe nothing. But this is the, like, a depth of attention to what I'm saying I write in my emails and it's always like a new email I'm not gonna be like copy delete his name and like 
paste this to some other email. Like, I'm just going to rewrite it, even though it's the saying the same shit. Because it's real that way, you know? Like, I'm not trying to just be spamming people with, like, copy and paste bullshit. I'd rather it be rewritten bullshit, you know? Like, that way it's, it's like, uh, what's the word? Like, um, compost or something? Where you're, like, making sure to stir it up so the bullshit can air out and, you know, be, like, fer- fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, if this were to be, be the case, then we could determine such by using different materials to form as, meaning if the slit is, the mass of the slit is gravitationally lensing the passing particles. If this is the case, then we could determine such by using different materials to form a single slit, not even a double slit, just a single slit, while maintaining all other parameters the same and measure any influence that the change in the slit materials has on the resultant wave, especially intensity at distances. So the more it deflects it, the more it deflects a lot. It means it's lensing more like a... So if we saw a light that had a certain intensity at one point and then it got distributed out to like a wave, if its distribution is is wide and the energy goes out further, that means it's being lensed more. So if something like steel lensed more than say something like carbon, then that would and especially across many materials where a correlation could be more apparent, then that would basically prove that the mass of the slit material is relevant to the outcome of the experiment. And I go on to say, this is a prediction which which is testable vastly easier than any current theoretical predictions in physics which require at times billions of dollars to even attempt to investigate while it's extremely simple conceptually it is difficult for me to test this on my own without precision craft for the purpose of experimentation components so if anyone wants to help me with that I don't even know where to get this type of shit. Something to actually do this. Due to the necessity to have as precisely identical slit dimensions of each material used as possible, I would require components manufactured for this exact purpose. I have tried to do this on my own and have done so in a cursory manner using guitar string and pencil lead. (laughs) where I was saw promising, albeit questionable results, promising because they produced interference patterns and what I expected happened, questionable because it was questionable. <laughs> like, not scientific. In terms of just academic standards, you know. But really don't know how to go about running this this experiment with the precision necessary to truly test. And if there are not null results, demonstrate indisputably that the material of the slit is pertinent to the experiment itself as a source of gravity on the passing particles, a yet unconsidered possibility. Unless this experiment has already been done. I, honestly, I'm, I've never heard anyone even suggest this is a possibility. I've not found even a suggestion whatsoever in any, lit- any literature or in anything where someone's just like talking about the history of the double slit experiment or anything. I've never heard anyone be like, 
And then we determined that the slit material was not in any way gravitationally influencing the passing particles, if they are particles, and so it must be quantum. <coughs> Never heard anyone even, like, possibly suggest it. That's why I'm like, maybe that's what's up. does make sense after all whereas the double slit explanation it just brings in like all this just where the hell did this come from it's just completely new ideas about the nature of reality that are unfounded they're literally founded in one experiment and then those that follow but it, like the foundation is the double slit experiment <clears throat> so to give a different explanation for the double slit experiment and then to proceed to prove it would just dis be like good luck quantum good luck guys like this if this experiment had tangible measurable indisputable evidence that the material mattered it would just literally topple topple standard models they just be like fucking collapse good luck how oh, did your cornerstone fall out okay <laughs> uh <laughs> I mean, this is enough. This is literally enough to prove what I have to say. If it's, if it's happening, that's what I'm saying. It would be nice to test it. Like, why not? What are we afraid of? <laughs> Probably me. Probably me. Don't worry about it. It's all good, guys. I agree that the model I propose is incomplete, just as in just as is every model inherently so. If the universe is infinite, by the way, guys, <laughs> every model is, is going to be incomplete. I mean, besides just like that, it is like yeah, it's infinite. Doesn't really say that much though. It really says nothing. In terms of like, okay, now what? Tell me how this works. How's a, how does it, how does gravity work? Well, it's infinite. What the fuck, dude? It doesn't explain shit. <laughs> so, uh, any model is gonna be incomplete if it's actually trying to explain things. Besides just generically saying infinite. <clears throat> and that would be an inherent thing of an infinite universe, which the universe is. I think, I mean, unless it's some approximation or it's just good enough. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't make sense. But I would like to earnestly run this experiment and feel that it is the best way for the scientific community to quickly and without vast investment of time or energy determine whether the model is at least onto something and worth more for a careful consideration. I strongly believe, based on this article, there is already ample experimental evidence. So I just go back into that same freaking article where they got the bending of the paths of the slower velocity particles are more bent because they're gravitationally lensed more because they're exposed to the gravity of the slit for a longer duration due to their low velocity <clears throat> i just reiterate it's crazy I feel that this is genuinely a reasonable and legitimate experiment proposal that has not been tested. 
if you know of an experiment where they de definitely showed the slip material has no influence on the result and wave, I would love to see it, seriously. <laughs> Everything else, it would seem, could be figured out more precisely and completely if there were tangibly apparent correlations. And if there were not, well then, perhaps the model is truly and fundamentally deficient. Ultimately, I want to know what is true, not to reaffirm my beliefs, unless they are true, unless they are, of course, true. <laughs> hey, just being honest, if they're true, I want to uh, know that even more so than I know that now. No. Just... It's kind of like I am. Like It's one thing to say I am, but it's another to know it. And it's a moving scale. It's... You know, I don't know what ways there are for an outsider to work with academics and run an experiment, but this is largely my objective presently and believe, given the extent of the model, that it would behoove the very able-bodied scientific community at large to at least check to make sure there is a null result where the result in wave is not influenced by changing slip materials. I don't even know where to begin in making an experiment up to academic standards where nanometer scale errors dimensions are enough to warp observations so the results are indecipherable and would appreciate any direction or help with this or finding someone willing and able to run this very simple yet outside of my current scope experiment. Can you guys help me get this tested? Directly or indirectly, surely finding a correlation indicating the material of the slit is pertinent to the results of the double slit experiment would matter. Wait, wait. Surely finding a correlation indicating the material of the slit is pertinent to the results of the double slit experiment would matter to the scientific community at large in terms of being a significant and important discovery given that it, it has as of yet been fully and, un, and completely unconsidered and would influence how the experiment is interpreted necessarily. No model could really stand in the face of such evidence if it did not account for this mechanism. Meaning this is a simple and good test. Good test. Good test to test my theory, guys. <clears throat> Just saying, any, uh, anyone out there who may have lost some kind of prize looking for a way to get the prize, if you show a correlation between the mass of the slit material and gravity or and the deflection of the particles by gravity like there's no argument at that point it's just like wait what's happening just cite me just cite me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, this, this dude said maybe, like, this might be worth checking out, so it looks interesting, huh? All right, that's crazy. <laughs> well, let me know. Let's work together. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, y'all, um, that's it for now. Uh,. I've been seeing someone just throwing that out there. Now it's out there. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>